<laughs> we are part of the You Run Network. Yes, we are. <laughs> and with the you run network you can check it out online they have multiple podcasts ranging from movie reviews true crime all the way to kind of like us where they cover horror and everything in between dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. and with that being said um i also want to preface because i forgot this on our last episode that halfway through our episodes now you will hear um advertising for podcasts that are related to the you run network yes you will that's right. All right. Now let's kick this bad boy off. So welcome to the Paranormal Misfits, where the curious roams, the weird feels at home, and horror is just another day. I'm your host, Chrissy. And I'm your host, Nino Daniel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on one today, y'all. You are. When, when am I not, though? When? When are, I know. You are on point every episode. Thank you. I have had, by the way, it is so hard to edit our episodes because I'm like, I don't really want to cut this out. The amount, like, I need every single person watching this or listening to this in any capacity. (laughs) When I tell you the two of us getting together is just a recipe for ADHD, HDHD disaster. It's, It's on there. It's there. And every episode, I think somehow we talk about our ADHD in the mist, either complimenting how we've stayed on track so well or how we've completely derailed. You know what? Filming the the Kyle Marissa Roth story, that was good. Oh, that was fabulous. Actually, at the time of recording, the Kyle Marissa Roth episode comes out today. It does. 5.55 Eastern and 2.55 Pacific. That's right. PM. We mean PM, folks. PM, guys. (laughs) This shit isn't going to come out in the morning. Mm -mm. No one. No one's alive at the morning like that. No, I'm not. (laughs) Babe, the sun isn't even up. I don't think God is up. No, he hasn't taken his morning pee yet. No, honestly, that's one of my (laughs) favorite thing to do in the morning is just to like bolt over to the bathroom and just be like, ugh. You know, I love it when, you know, for guys, it's different. Our built-in hose does activate. <laughs> That's right. My husband sits for at least 30 minutes. Oh, my 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 bare minimum in the bathroom is 45. But not this morning <laughs> because it is 710 in the morning and I woke up 40 minutes ago. You did. You did. So, I was worried for a second. I was so, like, I haven't heard anything. Don't worry. Everything is fine. And did my phone fall underneath my bed and I had to use a Swiffer to get it out? Yeah. No. No, no, no. I did. I did. Oh my god! That's um, ladies and gents. That that is what the, that's what you call ingenue, which is French for ingenue. Okay, so before we get onto our subject, because this today's subject we're going to be talking about a potentially haunted location in Hollywood. Potentially. Potentially. So, what have you been? I have this morning. <laughs> I did a deep dive and I didn't even mean to. So apparently there's some beef going on between Drake and girl. What's his name? Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, who has now murdered him. Murdered. Have you heard it? Isn't it the Family Matters track that just came out? No. So Family Matters was Drake's. But then Kendrick Lamar, literally less than 10 minutes after Family Matters drops, drops one called, um, oh, the, is it the Aubrey's? Not the odd. The Grams. He lets a little, to it. The, he lets a little tidbit out that Drake has a daughter, an 11 year old daughter. In America? In America, Florida. And by the way, when you hear me say in America, it means, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Because there's a lot of the things I look at going on in this country, and I'm like, are you fucking serious? He, I, yo. So when you scroll on TikTok, catch a couple of the content creators. I think Stony, Stony the Great, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. I love your hair. Thanks, babe. He, he's covering it. Um, there's a couple others, but I was like, God dang. Because I like heard like snippets of stuff, and I could, could usually care less. But they started playing the whole snippet. Where, like, Kendrick Lamar basically murdered Drake on (laughs) just calling. He's like, if uh, he's talking about pedophiles and all sorts, I was like, oh my God. Wait, Kendrick went into that? Um, Kendrick, don't do that, babes. They're going to get you. (laughs) Like, it was his his album cut or the cover of the diss track has has Drake's Ozempic prescription in the picture. 
Because didn't, okay, isn't the rumor that Drake also has a BBL? Yes. And, and he goes into that too, hanging out with them Brazilians <laughs> instead of going to the gym. Man. <sighs> This is see what was so funny is everyone everyone decided when Nikki and um Megan oh by the way there's a new beef between um I didn't know this because apparently I've been off Twitter and I'm so sorry <laughs> to the Barb's I am a forever Barb if you're not if you're not a Nikki fan then mm-hmm. you a bitch deaf dumb you ain't my son you my motherfucking stepson apparently Nikki and Ice Spice are going at it. Are going at it secretly. I, I thought Ice Spice was on Nikki's side. Like not when, when she Megan took went. pictures with Cardi. Oh, hoo hoo! I did not know that. And so yeah. what's what's funny now is like you've got Nikki and JT and Big Sexy Red mm-hmm. versus Cardi, Megan, Glorilla. Which <laughs> how are you? I'm sorry, Nicki Minaj has now had, what, 30-plus consecutive sold-out shows on her world tour? Has she? I, I See, I don't keep up with a lot of it. That's okay. I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be my news. <laughs> but um, I'm on, I, I'll think, you know, I have a 47-minute drive today that I have to take, so I'm sure I'm going to be listening. Are these dr- diss tracks available on iTunes? So I looked on iTunes. I couldn't find any. Mm. Not from Kendrick. So I don't know if maybe they're on Spotify or if there's like a particular maybe like YouTube website or something. or something. Yeah. Got it. That you may have to go into because I, that's immediately what I did was this morning. I heard just that one snippet and like, I was like, hold on. <laughs> and I tried to pull, I was like, damn it. It's not on Apple. <laughs> probably, I don't know. Maybe someone paid a different streaming service off and said, don't put these, you know. But, um, yeah. What else? You know what? The yeah. amnesia is nesia ing. <laughs> this morning. But yeah, uh, it's all good. Do you want to tell the folks at home mm-hmm. about what we are? Uh... We can, yes. So we are getting into the glitzy, glamorous hotel known as the Hotel Roosevelt, located in Los Angeles, California. And it's actually one of the most historic hotels that is still consecutively running. So it was built in 1926. It cost a cool 2.5 million during that time period. Do you know? And also to anyone, if you adjust for inflation, wouldn't that be like in the hundreds of millions today? So when I pulled it up on, I don't remember whose website it was. um, They had equated it to fourth. 43.9 43.9 right now. I don't know if that might have been a few years before this inflation rise. I didn't check the actual like, time. Inflation's at 50%. Like, yeah. So definitely getting higher. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what, um, what, what, about like, what else? What else? <laughs> so oddly enough, Nino and I don't realize how great our planning is when it comes to picking episode content because I was looking this up. It opened on the 15th of May in <sighs> 1927. Shut the tits dick. I know because, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, wow. And this is premiering on the 11th. Yes. Yeah. Talk about timing. I know. So I was, it, I was 90, impressed. what, seven years ago? 90, yeah. 1927. 90... 1927, so, so 97 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, so this this hotel was obviously named after the 26th president, which was Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy. So it's 12 stories with 300 rooms, and I believe 26 to 27 of the rooms are suites. Um, It can be found on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and directly across from the TCL Chinese Theater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if you've ever visited places like St. Augustine or um, seen the older type of architecture in Spain or in Mexico, that is the type of style that this hotel was built in. So it's called the Spanish uh, Colonial Revival Style. Hola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um one of <laughs> Ola. 
Way to skip over that one, babe. I, I heard it. At the last, I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is that something funny? Wait. <laughs> wait. Let me go back. Let me go. Oh, my God. Um, the ADHD is kicking in early on. Oh, so bad. So if you've been to St. Augustine, if you've seen this uh, Casa Monica Hotel, that's one of the hotels that's in that style. Or if you've ever seen the El Capitan Theater, that's another colonial that's in, style. That's in L.A., Mm -hmm. right yeah yep um so inside they have nice leather sofas uh wrought iron chandeliers and colorful tiled fountains Mm. now it did go through a decline in the 50s in which it was almost demolished (gasps) not demolished oh yeah but in the 80s a particular group bought it out revived it back to its glory of the 1920s using their old historic photographs i don't like the way you said particular group I don't, I, I couldn't remember who it was. The way you were like, in a particular group. <laughs> Quick tangent, you know that is, I think we've mentioned it on the show before, but you know that there's a particular group. There's a lot of them. That purchased Epstein Island. Jesus Christ. Did you know? Is it no. Is it Nickelodeon? <laughs> the other one. Oh, it's Disney. Disney yeah. fucking bought it. God damn it. $300 million. Why would you? Why would you buy an island that has so much trauma to it? Have you never seen mind? You know Disney what? Ch- yeah, I was like, we're good, we're solid. I, right. I answered, mm-hmm. answered my own, answered my own. Right. <laughs> so, have you ever seen this hotel? Have you been to I Hollywood? Actually, I actually have. So, when I visited, um, I have a cousin who lives in Santa Barbara or Monica Lewinsky, whatever, <laughs> and I've actually like walked into the lobby of it. Just to kind of like take a little gand and just be like, hey, what's up? It is regal. Like there's something that comes over you when you you step back in time. Oh, that's awesome. I love when they can restore things to that manner because like it's so nice to see. It's incredible. Yeah. It's such a beautiful hotel. It's obviously one of the like landmarks of Los Angeles, if mm-hmm. not not like the United States, but it's like one of those things that's like there's a it lot is of definitely... other, there are other landmarks of the United States. Like we have Mount Rushmore, we have the highest rate for diabetes. There are so many there's things. so much. <laughs> we got it. We we ticked a lot of boxes. <laughs> I mean if you think about it, it is a really historic landmark for like the uh, entertainment industry. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, a hundred percent. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so some fun little tidbits in pop culture and famous guests who have stayed here. So the first ever Academy Awards was held there on May 16th. You, uh, 19- what the hell? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Look at our planning. Look at our uh, nine- planning. <laughs> So May 16th, 1929, inside what was called the Blossom Ballroom. There's a Gable Lombard penthouse where Clark Gable and his wife, Carol Lombard, and they used to stay there for uh, only, only $5 a night. Can we bring it? Can <laughs> that we bring back. that back? <laughs> if I had, do you know what $5 a night is? What is that? Multiply by 30. What is that? $150 a month? I would be living at the Hotel Roosevelt. Oh, oddly enough, our famous blonde shell vixen, (sighs) Miss Marilyn Monroe, did live at that hotel for two years at the beginning of her career, which is whenever she was a model. I do remember that she was taking photos, like, poolside. Not that Mm -hmm. I was there. (laughs) Um, Just stalking through photos. No, just when I was, like, (laughs) I, so, for, like, one of the things that happened during, like, the research for this episode is I had texted Marilyn via Ouija board. And (laughs) I was just like, hey, girl, what's up? Um... I got a few questions for you. Yeah, I have a few questions for you, babe. And she's like, hey, look through the center of the oracle and I'll transport you back in time. Um, which probably explains the cataracts. But, like, she looked really... she. This was, like, in the early phases of her career, right? When she was probably right hitting her, like, right at 20s. Oh, God, I wish I looked like that at 20. Who are you telling? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dylan. You are literally, you're a mom now. Like, <laughs> I was a mom starting at 21. Oh, God. Mm. 
No, um, she was she was gorgeous. And some of the ads that she did for like uh, Sunblock, I think it was like a sunscreen company. She did some photos. You're right, they're the whole side. Yeah. Elroy Flynn, which I believe is an Australian actor, is rumored to have created his recipe for bootleg gin in the hotel t- tub at their barber shop. <laughs> Which uh, I was like, that's a weird tidbit to brag about. But let's could go you with imagine, it. like, historically being known as the guy who was like, "Yeah, I created fucking liquor, <laughs> bootleg liquor." Boot oh, I'm leg. so sorry. My apologies. <laughs> I created bootleg liquor, and that's kind of like what Azealia Banks is doing with her soap <laughs> business, just that making it in her tub. Oh my god. So, aside from the academy. <laughs> We're gonna, we, you know what? No, we don't. Anyways, I was gonna say we apologize, but we don't. don't Apologize apologize. for way. Our audience knows us really well. (laughs) And I'm sure the people over at U Run are like, what the fuck is going on? They probably are. Like, why are they, why are they here this morning? (laughs) They need to go take a nap. We do. We do need to go take a nap. One thing I will interject, um, as well as the, um, promo that's going to go on in the middle of the episode mm-hmm. it, sorry in the middle of the episode my tongue lost control just there <laughs> my tongue always loses control when it comes to ice cream <sighs> so we actually have an announcement at the end of our episode for our giveaway winners we do we do so, and it's exciting so make sure you stay all the way to the end to find yeah out. and if you don't i'm gonna send la llorona <laughs> why are why are we always sending that that bitch why are we always that, sending- bitch, is, that bitch is unbooked Okay, <laughs> she's unfucking booked. Okay, she needs job, job security. She needs <laughs> job security. She's only haunting one motherfucking house. Are you sure? Are you sure? I mean, not mine because I have a black hat and I fight in real life. <laughs> I fight invisible things in real life. <laughs> I fight. Listen, one thing about me. One thing about me. I got holy water. I got a cross. I got crystals. I got sage. I got, sage, I got weed. <laughs> like, <laughs> got all the greenery. <laughs> one thing about me, we vegan up in this bitch. Um, <laughs> except for we're not. <laughs> like, okay, let me, oh uh, let's pull it, let's pull our a- heads out of our asses for just a second. Can we, hey, Chrissy, yeah. what else? <laughs> what else? Where were you? Um, so hold on. Okay. So aside from the first ever Academy Awards, which, Mm -hmm. uh, at that time when they had the awards, it wasn't known as the Oscar yet. Was it known as the Teddy? I I don't remember. Oh, Oh, stop it. it. (laughs) And it looked really small. Like the room that they had it in was like, Mm -hmm. teensy weensy. Yep. And it was, um, you had to be, you had to have an invite. You couldn't just, you you know, you couldn't just like waltz up in there. Yeah, bring that back. Bring that back. Bring it back. <laughs> bring back invites to the Oscars. <laughs> so the other award ceremony they're known to hell hold on, on site is the that Golden is Raspberry nice. Awards. The Razzies. Wait. So they have the Oscars. What? When so I we... saw that, I was like, is that the Razzies that I think That's it is? Razz- so, okay. So they held an award for the best in the business. Mm-hmm. In terms of actors. That's right. And then they said, actually. Let's go the other end. For anyone who might not know what the Razzies are, Sandra Bullock has a Razzie. She does. And I think, what movie was it for? Was it for The Proposal? Was it for The Proposal? Oddly enough, I love that movie. So, like. (laughs) I just love it because. But I love it even more because she literally is dancing around the fire with Betty White. Singing from the windows to the wall. <laughs> yeah, like deserves. I don't know. Well, so the Razzies are basically um, an award for the worst mm-hmm. in acting. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're like, "Hey, come win an Oscar!" And at the same time, come win a Razzie. <laughs> I knew. You know what? I knew Hollywood was a little fruity. To beat him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna touch on that later. Um, so consensually. And, so an episode of I Love Lucy was filmed there at the pool. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's several scenes of sunset 
I think I must have put a type that. No, that was the name of the movie. Sunset with Bruce Willis was filmed mm-hmm. there that included the recreation of the 1929 first ever Academy Award ceremony. Oh also, Catch Me If You Can was filmed there as well as Prince performing five shows at the hotel during 2007. Wow, rest in peace to Prince. Right? And we don't mean finger. I need to time those better when you're not taking a sip. You do, because <laughs> laptops are a little expensive for, you know, the just the average. You, um, just in case you're wondering, I am doing this off of a $4,000 MacBook. Yeah. Yeah. The things that, yeah. Mm-hmm. The things that we do to make you guys laugh, damn it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then catch me if you can, just just to kind of do a little movie touch is the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio mm-hmm. film Tom Hanks. about wa- yeah washing checks. No, oh, yep. And, and the and, fact um, that he was a teenager and got away with it for so long, like and could impersonate everybody, pilots. What else was he? Uh, some sort of businessman. There was like tons. It was insane. And they would all just walk past him. And it was like a little cat and mouse. Yeah, I honestly enjoyed the movie. It was a great... Honestly, when I look back at that, one of my favorite films. Yeah. Like, and this was like young Leo, like, or younger Leo. hmm Without having to put his body in a dead bear carcass to win an Oscar, Leo. Uh, was it a dead bear or a dead horse? I thought it was a dead bear. Didn't he have to fight a bear? Honestly... Congrats, Leo, for yeah. winning an Oscar. Before Finally. <laughs> anyway. It only took you how long? Anyways, um, so we're going to get into the fun part, which I always love, is the haunting. So obviously so obviously, with the, the hotel being as old, having its rich history, and the fact that hotels are known to have deaths in it, whether they're natural, um, self-inflicted, or brought on by another individual... <clears throat> which there's a lot in Hollywood than to have that. What do you mean? Hollywood's the safest place ever. <laughs> so I did forget to cover this with part of the famous guest, but Montgomery, Montgomery Clift was known to reside at this hotel. He also lived there. Um, I believe at the decline. Nope. He lived there um, during his, his, when he was a top actor um, at this hotel and he was known to play the trumpet. So just remember that little tidbit. tidbit. Oh, when you say play the trumpet, you mean instrumentally, not mm-hmm. physically play a trumpet like as an actor. No, he he played a trumpet as like a way, I think, to wind down. Got it. Because mm-hmm. the way my tired ass brain interpreted <laughs> what just you just that. said, he's like, oh, he played the trumpet. And I was like, did he get into a costume? He was known to walk up and down the halls practicing his scripts and everything. There oh. was a particular room he loved staying in. Which um room? <laughs> we're gonna get there. That room. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so you know, with the hotel, there's been many guests and staff who have over the years shared their various uh various stories. Sure. One of the ones deals with a full length body mirror. And this would be near you did. That is the Marilyn Monroe mirror that used to be in her suite. Now they had to remove that mirror because it would freak guests out and they would check out in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day. And they were having a hard time booking that suite. No, I'm good. Could you, but like, could you imagine like that being the selling point? Like, Hey guys, we got a really great suite for you. It's the one Marilyn fucking Monroe. I mean, so like, what it is is her her image she would she would appear in the mirror right no to me i'm I'm still in a toss-up on this but i still believe it mirrors are portals why uh-huh. would we want to play candy man and freaking well why bloody the fuck mary do we, why do we have scrying <laughs> mirrors why do we have scry. scrying mirrors which are literally you can make Portals. any mirror a scrying mirror yeah if you literally just darken the room that you're in mm-hmm. and of mm-hmm. course a hundred percent mirrors or portals <laughs> anything that's reflective i mean have we not seen the mirror of air said from harry potter and the sorcerer's stern stern yes yes we have and things dropping into pockets or reliving glory yes yes and what the fuck is up with this like the, i mean literally professor coral is a two-faced man gemini looking ass i knew hey. they were dumb excuse me Oh, my birthday's at the end of this month. No, but you like you're you're a cuss, right? Um, okay. So 
so other things with Marilyn <laughs> with Marilyn Monroe. Oh, so the sightings scared the guests so many, so many guests and staff that the full link mirror was actually moved. One of the stories I found was they still see her image in the mirror, even in the manager's office, because at one point they put it in the office of the managers to hide it for a bit. To see if it would calm down. (laughs) And And it didn't. It didn't. Um, She is also seen enjoying herself in the ballroom. There's an apparition apparently said to be Marilyn Monroe where she's dancing around and moving all around the ballroom. So the Blossom Ballroom. Suddenly I can't dance. Suddenly my legs are broken. I'm sorry. I'm weird. I'm paraplegic. (laughs) So going back to Mr. Montgomery... Mm. So he has been reported to be playing his trumpet, brushing up against not only guests, but staff as well. Um, and even haunting their room 928. He's known to be kind of a uh, kind of a doo-doo head. We'll say it, we'll say it that way. Because he messes with the thermostats in the room. Oh damn it. Yep. So if you put it at cold, he's gonna move it to hot. So you gotta move it at hot if you want it cold. That's right. right. That's okay. what it sounds like. You gotta Yeah, go Montgomery. What you, what, what you know about that? <laughs> psychology. <laughs> Which, that's reverse psychology, Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> I need to I need to honestly take a fucking Xanax. I can't I can't talk about prescription pills knowing damn well I'm in therapy. Right. I'm kidding. Oh my god. All right. I'm Anna so Mar- sorry. Anna Marie's writing this down. Anna Marie's <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> So much for our therapy session. <laughs> like, okay, I have done nothing. No. <laughs> so he would, so he would kind of like fuck around in room nine twenty eight and turn on the radio as well. So he'd mess with the mm-hmm. thermostat and turn on the radio. Oh yeah, this was back before um, televisions were televisioning, mm-hmm. and all you had was the radio. The radio. Yep. Oh yeah. So um. So some people, especially staff, have reported feeling cold in certain parts of the hallway. And with that, they associated it with him brushing up against somebody, thinking of like uh, how two people would pass each other. So like he was known to pace the hallways. So they would feel that brush when they're going one way and it's going the other way. So I did find one chilling experience a guest had in that room. So she stated, the woman stated, that she was reading one night in the bed. Her husband was asleep beside her. And she felt someone tap her on her shoulder. She looked over. actual way I would levitate. (laughs) The actual way I would check out immediately. (laughs) Can we finish this? Because then we'll give you... We'll we'll talk about reactions after you finish this. Because, like, I'm I'm like... (laughs) Oh, yeah. So... I'm already shooting myself. (laughs) So she felt someone tap her on her shoulder, thinking it's her husband. She turns to her husband, and he is dead ass asleep. No, no. The way I would evaporate from this planet. <laughs> the way I would be pulling out crystals and saying, you can't touch me. Don't touch me. Can't touch this. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I um, know. So I think I figured out the cure, and just, maybe this is TMI, but like <laughs> I get vacation constipation. So anytime I leave Arizona <laughs> and go vacation somewhere else, it takes me like a couple days to poop. <laughs> and maybe I just might take a little pit stop into the Roosevelt Hotel. Request room 928. <laughs> and then leave. I would Poughkeepsie so quickly. Oh my God. I would Poughkeepsie so quickly in that like, I'd be like, oh, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks so much, now. Montgomery. You're awesome. Who needs a Zempic <laughs> when you have ghosts? Like. Now, I did find another story. This one's from a psychic. I have a hard time with psychics. I also have a hard time with this story. Yeah. So Peter James is well no psychic. Um, claims to have spent the night in their room as well and had seen Cliff's ghost sitting in the chair in the corner of their room staring at him for 30 minutes. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. No. I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually busy that day. I know, right? That was in the 90s. I think, like, 92. Um, but I was sitting there thinking, like... Me and me and a me and a ghost are not gonna sit and play a staring contest for because they'll fucking win. Minutes. They'll right? win. Not only will they win, but like, I'm I'm good. I don't want to join the afterlife because I've put my body into so much stress. I would go Xerox white. <laughs> 
I yeah. just like I was reading it and I'm like, wow. Like, and you're a psychic, so why wouldn't you be asking questions? I thought that was like why wouldn't you be like, how the fuck did you die? <laughs> why are you here? Why are you okay? Let's start with that one. I if I were a psychic and I'm looking at a ghost for 30 minutes. <laughs> I would not I, be doing it in silence. I would not be doing it in silence. I'd be like, hey, what are you doing here, crazy? They double bugged <laughs> the room. <laughs> hey, um, when we talk about crossing over, like, did you make it okay? <laughs> you know, maybe you need therapy and I know a really good one. She can teach you how to like let go of things. We can also tell you exactly what time period you're in and it's not the one you think you're and in. And it's not the one you think you're in. We have cable now. <laughs> we have satellite. Okay, we have Sirius XM. Well, That's not a plug, but if y'all want to sponsor us. Right. <laughs> okay, so this one I had a hard time, and I didn't put it in the notes, but I do remember this one. I have a hard time um, finding more stories on it, but supposedly because Clark Gable and his wife Carol Lombard spent so much time at that hotel, they are said to also be seen near their suite. Ah, oh, fucking shit. I know. And their suite had the clearest view of the hills and the Hollywood sign is where their suite is located in the that hotel. That sounds... I'm sure back then ominous. it sounded fantastic. Oh, I'm sure, but now... <laughs> now it probably, you know, I'd rather I'd rather just look at four walls. Um, I was or doing some research... Oh, no, no. I was doing uh, research on... <laughs> just like what kind of happens at the hotel. Anyways, um, I was doing uh, some research and the amount of attraction to the hotel and the ghosts from YouTubers who just love like exploring that stuff is insane. We're talking mm -hmm. like pages and pages of YouTube results on people exploring the hotel yep. and um, like going to the pool and trying to like just also the way that you said that mirrors are portals I think pools are too the water yeah the water and mm -hmm. if you've seen the worst movie Night Swim I tried I tried that was so freaking stupid just like I was trying to watch the Lazarus effect with oh um that one was terrible I was like this is so boring um, anyways side note <laughs> really quick before we jump back into it I heard horrible things about tarot <sighs> I <Anyways>. bet. <laughs> oh, another side note before we get on that one. Ooh, so yay. apparently Mike Flanagan is in the talks of redoing and hopefully in a very in a much better way, The Exorcist. I read the However, it's with Blue. I knew that. I knew that. I knew I read it. I knew I read it. <laughs> you did. You did. God. Blue and House. I love I love Mike Flanagan. He has done amazing. Like, I love his series. I do. Like, uh, yeah. So, hoping he can do it some justice. Kind of mad that it's with Bloomhouse, though. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's nothing better than hanging out with your best friends chatting horror movies. At Voices from the Mausoleum, we have programming that covers everything from found footage to gaming, interviews, and even the first horror morning talk show. Come join us. We're all friends at the Mausoleum. Hey fam, Newman here from Movies for Days, your non-pretentious easy access movie chat podcast and weekly deep dive into any film from any genre, from any decade with anybody's guess as to how we chose that movie that week. Proud member of the You Run Podcast Network. Check us out where all great podcasts can be heard. And on Twitter, at Movies Days. Movies is spelled regular. Days is spelled with a Z. <laughs> We're going to get the train back. Yeah. All right. So our final ghost is not one known for any famous stature or anything. Um, this is the spirit of a little girl named Caroline. Oh, fuck now, that. There's not a lot of history mm -hmm. on Caroline. There's a couple of like, I don't know, you know how like uh, between psychics to paranormal investigators, there's not like Everyone a clear has cut an opinion of who she is and how she got there. But so she's seen in two different ways. And that's where I get kind of confused because I'm reading it and I was like, okay, she's in a blue dress, which kind of reminds me of like, um, 
<laughs> Tower of Terror. With I was just gonna say because there's they said that she is known to kind of skiff around in the lobby area in like you know little girl clothes. Girl, like Which, doesn't she know people are trying to check in the fuck? <sighs> she has thrown off receptionist. Receptionists have thought she's like a clear cut little girl just having a good old time because she's skipping around and she's singing, and that's what made me go, My god, I am terrified of freaking Tower of Terror, and that's the reason why is because you there's a little girl that skips and sings around. But isn't tower isn't Tower of Terror kind of based on is it based on the Roosevelt Hotel? Is it? I thought it was based on the one, um oh my god. I don't know. The to- Hollywood Tower Hotel. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, would I don't know. Up with hotel names, like <laughs> honestly, sure. why? Why Roosevelt? Why not Lincoln? Why not? What? Why not John Johnson? Johnson? Do we yeah. have a Johnson? We had a Johnson. That or doesn't Lincoln. sound right. Yeah. The way <laughs> I just caught that. <laughs> uh huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. said penis. No. You said. <laughs> <laughs> you said ding dong. Oh my god. Yes. You guys were so sorry. <laughs> Actually, no, we're not. We're not. Not today. No, we're All not. All right. So everyone says they always see like an image of her. Um, main thing is said is that well, this only comes from the psychic. So that's why I have a hard time. We the all know credibility. The credibility, the like how I mean, I don't know. So supposedly she's tied to the building because she's looking for her mother. She ain't there, though. Leave. I know. Vacate, bitch. Oh, God. (sighs) So, our lovely lovely psychic Peter James encountered seeing her and then speaking to her also in 1992, which I think is around the same time where he had the cliff experience. Um, So, he was speaking to her in what's called the Academy Room. Oh, that sounds ominous. Right. Um, when asking her what was wrong, the only answer she could give was that she was worried about her mommy getting hurt. Bitch. <laughs> like, you spent all that time talking to her and that's the only thing you got? Wait, so you're telling me. So you're a psych- Not a psychologist. What the fuck is the word? Psych- you're telling me that a psychic spent time with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, mind you guys, we do believe in the paranormal to an extent. What- Oh, but there's do like, we believe in the paranormal? Yeah, geez, take the look at the title card. Right. No, but I just mean like, but we also have like this, this, we still keep critical thinking in the front, the forefront I of everything. Say, it's very, it's giving occipital lobe. Like, yeah. Like, you no, know, frontal, frontal, frontal. We're just throwing, like, it, to me, then this is where I have issues. Like, no, no, uh, no disrespect to psychics. I have a hard time. But, like, people like Sloane, what is her name? Sloane Bella? Sloane Bell? She's, like, the blonde, older white lady who, like, hops on TikToks, has YouTubes, and is like, I talk to O.J. Simpson's spirit and blah, 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 blah. And this is, is how OJ, impo- Is O.J. dead? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he died. Oh. From cancer. Oh, oh yeah. Um, claiming she's that. she's talked to Kim Porter's spirit and Aaliyah's spirit and... And I have issues with that because not only does that cross like a really fine line of just like blatant disrespect for the dead. I mean. But like normally, from my understanding, with psychics, they have to like ask the family (laughs) to be able to tap in. Exactly. You have to have a personal connection Mm -hmm. to be entered into that space, into that like third eye portal thing. Right. And I mean, because, you know, think about it. When we did our therapy sessions with Anna Marie, she asked for consent first to tap into energy before she taps into your energy. Like it's it's a it's a consent thing. And I have yeah. issues with that. So this so. this person might have been talking to a Leah, but it was not talking to the Leah. Right. Yeah. We could have been talking to a Kim Porter, but, you know, Porter's a pretty generic last name and so we also could have been talking to a celeste porter for all we know (laughs) exactly so yeah i have 
I have a hard time, guys. So, you know, if that's one of your comments back on this episode, I apologize, but I'm sorry. I, I have a really hard time with psychics, especially ones that sit there and gloat about who they have talked to or whatever, because I always, I also don't like when they bring psychics onto paranormal shows because, like, there seems to be like this discourse. <laughs> Not you getting into a full blown review of Late Night with the Devil. <laughs> it's me. That's what I do. <laughs> It's me. Hi, I don't want to say that anymore, Lou, because I'm gonna, I don't want to get sued for copyright. I know. It's just that's what I do. Like there is, there's a couple teeth. You know what? Different episode. Different you know episode. What? You know what? We, <laughs> we have to have. We'll we'll have a bonus ADHD episode. We will. We will. <laughs> kind of like our one. What was it back in February, January when you oh, came the on? Conspiracy as a- theory one when I was a st- <laughs> when I was still a guest. Yeah. And we were just <laughs> derailing every which way oh. with our ADHD. <laughs> nothing. There was nothing. There was nothing straightforward about that episode, including my sexuality. <laughs> oh my god! All right. So how am I tired? But I can still make you laugh. I love this. Hey. I love it. Thanks hey. for laughing with me, friend. You're welcome. It's a great morning on a Saturday. Yeah. For you, it's the morning. For me, it's still fucking dusk. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> It's like I got up, did yoga, spoke to the dead, played Ouija with my sons, mm-hmm. daughters, uncles, aunts, whatever else wanted to come in. <laughs> and I'm over here like I had to use a Swiffer to get my phone from out underneath my bed this morning. Hey, ingenuity, man. Ingenuity. And you know what? That's French for ingenue. <laughs> okay, bring us back. Bring, bring us back. Bring us bring back. Bring it back. Our final, final known hauntings of the hotel are two unknown men. Go figure. I've had that um, in my life. So, <laughs> couple of Tinder dinners. Just okay, coming back. All right, both have been seen. <laughs> both. <laughs> oh, Jesus H. Christ. Both, both have, have been seen doing what? How? Like, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Both have been seen in the Blossom Ballroom, dressed as if they were either attending an event or being the entertainer for a certain event. Oh. Um, one is seen in a black tuxedo, probably within the time period between the 20s to the 40s. Same for the other one. Only his tuxedo is white. Um, one of them is seen walking around the ballroom. The other one, guests have seen have um guests have said that they have heard and seen him playing a piano yeah Her, heard okay heard i can get seen too like sitting at the piano like okay are we sure it's not like a lot of alcohol a gin that's literally mm-hmm. what i was gonna say mm-hmm. are we sure, sure we it's didn't... not a gin are we sure it's not um some bootleg alcohol they might have gotten out of one of the dumps <laughs> Ye, and when I say ye, I mean ha, you know? Oh. Like, <laughs> it's like Casey Musgraves. When I say ye, you say ha. I didn't fucking say ye. Can't. Not today. Oh my god. Okay, so my my question is this. So they've seen these men mm-hmm. in the Blossom Ballroom. Mm-hmm. What, like, what do you do when that happens? Do you report it to the front desk? Hey, by the way. Hey, by the way, this guy was... So apparently... The one couple that saw the guy and heard the guy playing the piano, they went to go give a positive review. How? Right? Yeah. Yeah. They were like, oh, that music that that man was playing was so great. That was such a nice way to, you know, enjoy our meal or whatever they were doing. And the the staff is like, we don't have anyone playing the piano. Wait, was this couple in the Blossom Ballroom having Mm -hmm. dinner? I think so. I think the ballroom is... When you say ballroom, like, I would assume that more people would be in there. Well, it depends on what time of night. I don't know what kind of nightlife, you know, like that kind of hotel. Because when I think Los of, Angeles. well, I think of like, you know, hotel from American Horror Story where they have the one guy that's like the bartender at like all hours of the day. Wasn't he a ghost? No, not yet. Oh. Huh. He didn't become a ghost until after. But that was, wasn't that based on Hotel Cecile? Yes, which I want to cover that one too, because of that shit. That, that shit's shit crazy. Bonkers. And I think that's one of the hotels the Black Dahlia was seen at too. <sighs> Dahlia, what are you doing? Everything everywhere. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> girl, go home. Like, go home. No, like, 
<laughs> Jesus. Okay. All right. So you've seen the hotel. Would you stay in the hotel? And which one would you stay in? Um. So I would definitely. I don't think it's actually. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it's a hotel anymore. Mm -hmm. It still is. Well, parts of it are. Parts of it are also um, low-income housing. Is it? I think, maybe. Oh, it was at one point. Oh, it was at one point. I'm so it sorry. It was so, at one point. Okay, so now, because I I watched some stuff. Um, this gentleman did, like, a tour. Mm -hmm. And it, he, had, like, he had said, like, oh, you know, it's, like, this... Like this wing of the hotel is like low income housing and everything like that. I so I've been in it personally, right? And I, knowing what I know now, and how much like you've really done like your research, and I've done um, grabbing a Swiffer to get my phone. Um, I don't know if I would. To be honest, I don't know. Like there's a. Uh, there's a hotel here in Bisbee, Arizona called the mm -hmm. Copper Queen Hotel. Oh, yes. Do you know about it? I, I, I have seen some episodes on it. So I've actually, I've stayed in the, in the Theodore Roosevelt room. Oh. Yeah. How was that? And, um, that hotel, there is something attached to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do like we can we can even talk about that in an episode just because like I have like personal experience, but um, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the potential of portals being there. Mm -hmm. Like I'm already sensitive to spirits as it is, and no, I don't mean the things that you drink. Um, but I'm already like super sensitive to that myself, based off of the first episode I was a guest on. Right like back in October of 23. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would get sleep. Yeah. So I thought that too, right? So we stayed in St. Augustine. We stayed at one of what's considered one of the haunted um, bed and breakfasts. Oh, where rain. I know, but it was such a good deal. And it was, so That's they bad. made, <laughs> they make fantastic food. It's a small little like, do they make it or do the ghosts make it? No, they make it because the ghosts are said to haunt the second level where you're supposed to hear, like, you know, like walking and stuff. But honestly, nothing really happened. So, like, I don't know. Mm. I think the only thing I remember that happened, um, and they decided to tell us this after the fact. Oh, no. See, I hate when they do that. Like, I please just give me the information up front. Don't don't let me find out and I, I poop myself or something. We were the only ones on our floor. <gasps> no. And the way that, like... And I know people, like, can explore different floors and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, we didn't... And may, well, no, correction. We were the only ones on our, on our wing. Okay. I do remember seeing other people, but, like, I, I would look sometimes, like... Mind you, this hotel is old. The Copper Queen. Yeah, it was a uh, mining, right? Mining, mining. town. It's a, it's a mining town. Bisbee's a mining town. It's yeah. still. I mean, you. <laughs> um, there's a whole thing to explore about Bisbee, mm -hmm. but um, we. I remember, like, my husband and I, we were getting ready for bed, and mind you, they didn't have like queen or king size beds. He slept on one twin. I slept on another. <laughs> Mattresses, not people. And oh my god! I slept the, on them one the furthest in the room, like mm -hmm. in the corner. And I remember like getting ready for bed, and I look to where our door is, and I see the shadow of like feet standing at the threshold of our door. It's two o'clock in the morning. Everyone else is asleep, and no one else is on our side of the wing. Mm -mm. And then we kept hearing like things throughout the night, like pipes rattling and everything like that. We kept hearing, like, the sound of water flushing. Both of us are asleep. Oh, my. No. And then... <sighs> oh, my gosh. The only thing, the only other thing I personally didn't like is that um, the toilet in the bathroom, mm -hmm. like, if you sit on the toilet, straight ahead is a clear window. And oh. I'm over here, like, the last thing I need anyone in this town watching is me fight for my life on this porcelain throne like no amount of wet wipes are gonna cure this <laughs> and i was there oh, for a burlesque showcase i performed and i didn't do burlesque i was like i'm doing a hip-hop routine nice nice the only type of pasties i use is elmer's 
So I have, um, I talk regularly with the, the Dr. Ghost Hunters and they have been, I'll have to, we'll have to get them on because they've been to a couple of spots in Arizona too. Like they did it for new years and they were like, it was, it was pretty cool because I, I caught a couple of their lives and I was like, Hey, Arizona, Southern Arizona. Oh yeah. Like Jerome, Bisbee, all of these places. Mm-hmm. Haunted. Oh yeah, because of the mining towns, there was so much oh, tragedy. Yeah. Well, not only that, there was so much competition between mm-hmm. families. Yeah, like you wanted to make sure that your family was doing the best. Mm-hmm. That's a whole. You know what? I couldn't find anything because I was. Re- that's what made me kind of go into like the uh, that whole thing about back rooms. Mm-hmm. Is I was literally like conspiracies associated with hotel rooms or. Like the Roosevelt Hotel or da 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 da. And I tried to find things about back rooms. Yeah. Casting. I know they exist. I know so, they exist. So we know, like, if you, huge Maryland, Maryland fan, I have tons of biographies and different books. You know, early in her career, that that's the way that basically she was kind of handled. So I'm sure at some point, especially at the Roosevelt Hotel, I'm sure there were some big wigs that came over and were like, hey, oh, I'll get course. you this and blah, blah, blah. So like, I'm sure it's there. It's just really, it's probably one of those, like, you have to like really dig for it. I'm, and I don't think, I, you're right with that. Cause I don't think they're just going to like Mm-mm. say shit. No, no. And that makes me think, like, when it was um, a low-income housing place, like, what did they see? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. Because this, I mean, think about the Cecil. The Cecil's a low-income at some point. Is it Cecil or Cecile? Cecil. I've always heard it said as Cecil. (laughs) We're like, "Mm." hmm. We don't look that one up. (laughs) We're we're, we're gonna... We're going to check a couple people out and see what they say. <laughs> We're going to get someone to do like a hooked on phonics. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So would you stay? Would you stay at the Hollywood? Roosevelt? No. No? Would you? Um, I, I probably don't... would. I would be. Chrissy's like, hey, can some shit? <laughs> I want to play a game. That was actually on. That was pretty spot on. That was good. Um, no. I don't, I don't know if I would, I, I'm not a big fan of like staying in haunted places, <laughs> says the man who stayed inside the Copper Queen Hotel. Yeah, exactly. Um, in the <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt fucking room. And that's literally called the presidential suite. Mm. It's the biggest room in the hotel. Nice. With twin size beds. <laughs> it's, it's really awkward how you get into the room. And yeah. that's the other thing that scared me. If I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, um, you like open the door mm-hmm. to the the main entrance door. There's immediately steps because you have to like, mind you, my husband is six foot one and I'm six foot two, so right. we both kind of have to like <laughs> crouching tiger, hidden gaze, like, <laughs> and like you have to like take steps down into mm-hmm. your room. And but there, but like when you're sleeping in your bed, there's this ominous dark hallway where the main door is. And like, this isn't this isn't it, (laughs) no. And then on top of that, we stayed at um the Bisbee Grand Hotel. The one redeeming quality about that place is that each guest gets free breakfast. That's always, I mean, food is a plus. Was it good food though? It it's from the restaurant. It's from the Bisbee Grand Hotel restaurant, so it's good. Okay. Um, but no, I just there's something that I have about like sleeping in haunted places. That is mm. so. See, I I you know I did the one in St. Augustine, right? But I th- to me all hotels feel creepy. One hundred percent. Like all of them. So like whatever. But what actually creeps me out more than staying in a hotel is camping. I prefer camping. Do you really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say I don't. I wouldn't camp. I was, I was a Girl Scout, so I camped in the fucking woods. I mean, I did. I did like once stay in the middle of a forest. Granted, in the center of that was a residence and hotel, but like you don't need to know that. That's right. I mean, so 
I don't know, camping, for some strange reason, I get the worst heebie-jeebies with camping, and it could probably just be because of, you know, where we were when we were camping. I was in Tennessee. The Appalachia? The oh. Appalachia, yeah, because we were whitewater rafting. <laughs> Jesus Christy. <laughs> I was a teenager. Jeez. Oh, my God. <laughs> We got all of it out early because my kids are like, I want to go camping. I was like, <laughs> no, the fuck you don't. I was like, we're <laughs> glamping. We're going to. Oh, my God. Not the glamping. I'm the glamping. One, because um, this body cannot be laying on some hard, nasty dirt. Even in a freaking sleeping bag. Really, Chris, you really, Chris, you try being a refugee in this country. I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Any chance I, I get to play my refugee card? <laughs> I'm going to play it. <laughs> Shout out to Bosnia. Shout out to thank Bosnia. You for, thank you for making me who I am. Thank you, Bosnia, so much for helping me make who I am today. Um, oh, my God. Let us, let us know, if, to those listening, me and humans only, not ghosts. Sorry, guys. Sorry not to be non-inclusive. But um, would you stay in a haunted hotel? Do you know of a different haunted hotel outside of the Roosevelt Hotel in mm -hmm. Los Angeles or the Bisbee, I'm sorry, the Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee, Arizona? And would you stay there? If you have stayed in a haunted hotel, what's that been like for you? Yes, we would love to share some listener oh, stories. Oh, yeah, we would love to share. Yeah, you guys just call us in. 1-800-555-5555. Just, Just leave, drop us a note on Instagram. <laughs> Just drop us a note. DM either one of us. <laughs> Send an email if you really want to get formal with it. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> do you want, do you have anything to add, my love bug, before we announce our giveaway winners? No, I don't. I was really excited about this. Um hotel i kind of still want to see it but i'm more excited that we get to announce our winners yes Yay. yes yes so we had a giveaway all through this week mm -hmm. to just kind of raise awareness of our podcast get to know our audience and give back to you know members of our audience who wanted to participate Mm -hmm. And it was super simple. It was uh, following the both of us on all the social platforms and leaving a five-star review mm -hmm. on really just whatever, platform. whatever podcast platform mm -hmm. you want or you have access to. And we still really would like to request that if you have the time, which I know you do. Um, <laughs> if you've sat here this long with our two ADHD asses, <laughs> You sure as shit can leave us a five-star review. Any podcast platform available. That's right. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was really fun to be able to do this. And for those of you who also uh, don't know, we have merch. We do. We, we do. do. We Paranormal do. And Mystic it's exciting. Podcast is such, such good merch. Like magnets, stickers, hoodies, shirts. Cell phone cases. Cell phone cases. Notebooks. Uh -huh. Wait, you can even get your kid a shirt. You can even get you and your kid and your cat and your dog and your like rodent possum can all wear Paranormal Misfits podcast <laughs> <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> and if you really want to show off your swag, stick a magnet onto the uh, office copier printer. There you go. Really drive your coworkers nuts. <laughs> really just creep them out. <laughs> so do you want to announce your winner? I do. Oh. I do. Because I'm excited because I, he has been very active on our socials. Very active. Um, and he has given some great feedback and has even given us some movie suggestions, which I'm excited for. But it's Gabriel from the Indigenous Tales podcast. Um, if you guys haven't checked them out, they are actually two guys who are obviously indigenous located no way in and they share <laughs> we promise guys we love your podcast um <laughs> we do we do um they share obviously the history the lore of indigenous people but also bring to light the different uh, the missing murdered and indigenous women um the basically the uh the unfair treatment they've received considering they were here first so Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Gabriel. I do <laughs> want to give a very big special shout out to Gabriel, who has been so supportive of our socials and um, did a deep dive. 
he did into our episodes <laughs> and yes. we're so appreciative of that and maybe there's going to be an opportunity for us to collaborate mm-hmm. maybe be on an episode together yeah so that would be big cool. thanks to gabriel um <laughs> i want to give a special thanks to my winner uh her name is justa and she is new to the Arizona dance scene. And coincidentally, she was also very active with the giveaway, with reposting, tagging friends, getting eyes on our stuff. And I think it's it's one thing to, you know, get support from different people across like the world, but it means something special when you get support from your like the locals and yeah. And I don't say local in a negative way. I mm-hmm. mean that in the best way. So, Justa, thank you so much for being an incredible listener, a beautiful friend, and just being so interactive with us, and we really appreciate it. To the both of you, Gabriel and Justa, thank you both. And this is the start of the giveaways. Yes. Yep. This is not, this is something we're going to do every so often. Mm -hmm. So, look out for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Friend, before I take us out not like that not in not, that way guys we're still here <laughs> <laughs> like with a sniper <laughs> um, do you have do you have anything do you have anything you want to add or plug I do so guys make sure you follow us on both Instagram and TikTok Paranormal Misfits Podcast you can always send us your thoughts what you'd like to hear later um, any movie reviews or what you thought about the episodes. Yeah. Uh, we are always open to that. You can DM both Nino and I, I on the Paranormal Misfits podcast, Instagram and TikTok. And then myself at official Nino Daniel, Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. And also we have our own email, paranormalmisfitpod at gmail.com, where you can send in a formal, if you'd like to really type up an Ooh. email. Send us a chat GPT generated email. <laughs> please don't, please. <laughs> Hello, but, uh... fellow podcaster. <laughs> Hello, fellow podcaster. God. <sighs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, you can connect with us on there. Um, we are totally active. We're on daily. Yeah. We're li- <laughs> minutely. Like, minutely almost. <laughs> quite literally. You can always check out our merch, uh, Paranorm- Paranormal. You'll find it. Sound it Par- out. Yeah. It's all, it'll be in the show notes, but it's on Threadless. Mm-hmm. You can type up Paranormal Misfits Podcast or Pod, one of the other. I don't remember. I'll have to look at the notes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, make sure that you guys are subscribing to us on whatever platform you're on and always give us a review. It helps the podcast kind of boost up yeah. and we appreciate all of your love and support. So yeah, yay. it's been wonderful being co-host <laughs> and like just the amount of love we've received. And mm-hmm. again, I'm going to say this because gratitude should never be in short supply. I do want to emphasize. I'm very thankful to Chrissy. She brought me on to something that was already existing <laughs> and made me a part of her baby and her it's thing. It's now our brand. And it's now, our, yeah, I have trouble still saying that. <laughs> but it's just because I have guilt and trauma. <laughs> so thank you all so much for, for all of your help, for all of your support. Once again, we are the Paranormal Misfits. Thank you for following us and listening and subscribing and. You know, we know that you can't stay. But if you are going to leave, you might as well. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Oh, my God.